proud to say that I've been outlining for a number of years that the real big issue is going to be what happens with defined benefit pension plans. So I was reading a report that I can tell you how to get, by the way, in a second. It's a free report called Being an Opportunistic Within the Defined Benefit Pension Crisis. And I think this is a subject we're going to hear a lot more about. I was looking at that on the Integrated Wealth Management uh, site in Calgary. Well, Andrew Rulin, we gave a call to him, uh, who leads that group at the Integrated Wealth Management. Uh, Andrew, thanks for taking the time with us. My pleasure. Now, as you know, I, I you know, uh, in contacting you, I said, I, this is a really big concern for me. I mean, the fine benefit just simply means that you've been promised a, a monthly payout regardless of what's in the fund. Unfortunately, that isn't working out. That's why we've, I've been talking about the Dallas Police and Firemen Pension Plan, for example. That's been a big problem. Big problem with the teams, one of the Teamsters pensions in New York, et cetera. Tell me what's your big idea about this. Well, our big idea is looking seriously at rolling out your defined benefit pension plan if you are a member of uh, one of those types of plans. Just elaborate uh, or, a little bit what you mean by rolling out. Well, basically, when you make contributions to a defined benefit pension plan, your contributions, and then after a vesting period, your employer's contributions, belong irrevocably to you and your spouse and or estate. So that is capital that is invested on your behalf, pooled with all the other pension contributors. But if you uh, take action prior to a certain rollout age, that capital can actually be rolled out into a combination of a locked-in retirement account uh, and possibly even a non-registered account, depending on how much is, is in there. So you're talking about actually taking control of it yourself. That's exactly what it is. Basically... If you accept the defined benefit income that is promised to you, what you're doing is you're renting the income. What I'm talking about here is taking control of the capital for a couple of reasons. One is protection of the capital because there's all kinds of problems with the actuarial calculations that go into the promises that are made. There's also the issue of potentially getting a higher rate of return than the pension has promised you by generating superior returns in your portfolio, thus getting a higher income. And then there's the third element, which is making the remaining capital or the residue part of your estate instead, instead of letting that capital revert back in to help with lapse funding the rest of the pension retirees. Yeah, so a uh, bottom line is this, is that I've been chronicling this, you know, uh, that we're talking about, the, especially uh, we've seen this in the States where there's unrealistic investment return assumptions, like they're saying we're going to make 10%, 10 years later they've only made 3%, and there's actually much worse examples than that, so hence they're, they're short money. Well, you know, that's been a problem. I mean, I was, as I mentioned just a moment ago, the in Dallas, the Police and Firemen's Fund, they've stopped people being able to take that money out. And this is what you're addressing. I mean, I'm not trying to ring a big alarm bell here, but it's an important aspect to understand that you do have choices. Yeah, you do. And one of the important choices to, uh, to recognize here is the fact that we're in this environment where Long-term government bond yields are still very close to all-time lows, which means that your commuted value is still extremely close to its all-time high values. So you've been chronicling the, uh, the bottom of the, uh, the interest rate environment, thus the top of the bond, a government bond market for a year and a half, maybe up to five years, uh, talking about it in advance. We're probably past that. July of 2016 was probably the bottom of bond yields, top of bond prices. So we're still really close. So it's a really great opportunity uh, over the next little while to take advantage of uh, an investment theme that is hurting most people, and you can actually turn it to your advantage. Let's talk and uh, just very, make sure we're very clear on who is this appropriate for. Obviously, you've got to you know, figure out what your pension is. It's, is it a defined benefit pension plan, I guess, would be the first thing you ask. Exactly, and, and that's pretty uh, clearly defined, um, you know, so to speak, simply because you've always been told that, well, this is what your pension formula is. And so it's yes. your average salary times number of years of service times a certain pension factor, and that's a percentage that usually runs between 1% and 2%, unless, of course, you're a member of parliament, in which case it could be higher than that, but up to 2%. So uh, you would know uh, if you're a member of a defined benefit pension plan because they send you annual statements and tell you how much you'll get if you wait till a certain date. Okay, so next question you ask. You, you've, you've got a check mark there. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you have to find out if you're eligible for a rollout, and that is usually age-related. A lot of plans require you to roll out before age 55, 
not in all cases, but that's uh, that's a pretty common um, pretty common deadline. And then you have to look at what your actual numbers are and see if it actually makes financial sense for you. You also have to factor in income tax because in most defined benefit commuted value rollouts, there is a portion of that value that you own that is not transferable on a tax sheltered basis. So you have to factor in a one time tax hit and then look at the after tax effects going down the road. And of course, you need to look at making a really wise decision in the context of your financial plan. That's the most important part with any decision is context. Does this make sense for us? And um, there's, there's something else that there's a lot of people who actually are members of a defined benefit pension plan, but they, they are approaching 55, but they're in a situation where they need to continue working past 55. So that doesn't automatically mean that you're going to lose the right or the ability to roll the pension out. You can simply stop contributing and have your employer stop contributing to the defined benefit pension plan before age 55. You can continue working for the same employer with the same seniority, the same salary. You just don't have uh, yours or the employer's contributions continuing to go in and you get some RSP room back. Well, let me hold. You? Let me. I've got to hold you at that, Andrew. And I, and I want to do something else. I want to say, look, go to triple w integratedwealthmanagement dot ca integratedwealthmanagement dot ca. Go there. You can just request your. It's a free four page article on this on being defined benefit. Take advantage of some of the other information there. I'll give it to you more later in the show. Andrew, thanks for taking the time. Great subject to bring up to our audience.